to you ang, ang tagapagsalita ng Panginoon ngayong umaga. Amen? Our speaker this morning hails from Sagada Mountain Province but has resided also in various places of the Cordillera including Lepanto, Mangkayan Benguet, and Baguio City. He is a civil engineer by profession and he took his degree from Baguio College's foundation, now University of the Cordilleras. After surviving the deadly earthquake in 1990, he was still in the university. He pledged himself to serve God. And while at school, he had been an active servant of God as one of the young people, especially in the area of music, until he decided to go full-time in 1994, barely two months after he finished his degree. He was assigned in various places in the Philippines, but was often called by the bishop abroad, including Hong Kong, where he was ordained pastor in the year 2000. He first came to Canada in 1998 with the bishop and then again in uh, 1998 with the bishop, then again in the year 2000. Then in 2001, God brought them to Canada with his family, his wife, Sister Jocelyn Kodamos Buyakao, who is from Besau Mountain Province, and then little Judah, their firstborn child. Landing first in Vancouver, then were sent to Hamilton in July of 2001, to take care of a church on the verge of being closed. With prayer and perseverance, the Lord kept adding to their, to their number until the work expanded in Cambridge that also expanded to Guelph. In 2011, the church hall they were renting can no longer accommodate the members and the Lord miraculously gave two huge commercial buildings which they renovated and now serve as a worship place and convention hall for East Canada. Many other works as far as Leamington and Aylmer were also opened. Our speaker now takes care of Hamilton and outreaches with leaders behind him. He also oversees the whole of FBCFI Ontario and Manitoba, Canada and also FBCFI USA. They now have three children, Judah, who is now 18 years old, David, who is 15, and Eloy, who is 12. And they are residing in Hamil Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. It is a pri great privilege to give to you this faithful servant of God. Let's all arise and give the Lord a round of applause as we welcome Reverend Ruel Buyakal of Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Welcome Paul Pastor. Praise be to the Lord our God who is worthy of praise and honor and worship. Greetings to all of you there, all our brethren there in Hong Kong. Praise God. Happy anniversary. And I'd like to praise God and thank him for this opportunity that I can join you in this celebration. Thank you for the privilege. Thank you to um, uh, our bishop and to our pastor Evelyn for uh, the invitation and the privilege given me to join you in this celebration. And uh, it's nakakamiss din ng Hong Kong. It's been a while. It's been years that... Uh, uh, I've not been able to uh, visit there, but uh, thank God that even though through virtually we can be together. So let us go to the Word of God and uh, let's open it in the book of Psalms. Chapter 96, Psalm 96, verse 1. I'll read to you from the New King James Version. It says here, All sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all peoples. 
Also in the book of Isaiah, let's just read some text in chapter 54, Isaiah, Isaiah 54, verse 1. It says, Sing, O barren, you who have not born, break forth into singing and cry aloud. You who have not labored with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman says the Lord. I'd like to talk to you about the power of a song. There is power in a song. Um, could be both negative or positive. It depends on the singer and the lyrics, of course. It depends on the spirit behind that song. Well, of course, we're going to sing. I mean, we're going to um, talk about the power of the song for the Lord. God has designed uh, music or even um, that our intimate worship to the Lord is expressed through a song or through songs than any other way. Of course, we can always worship God in many ways. And we know that even our obedience, our, our um, uh, coming to, together to pray, coming together and do our service to the Lord, um, to serve him in many ways, is a worship to God, actually. But when we talk of intimacy with God, wherein we come and with all our heart express our worship to him, isn't it so wonderful that we can do that through singing? As we have read in all these verses, some of just so many verses that commands us to sing to God. Actually, it is amazing that it is God himself who, um, who uh, commands us to sing. He created music and music is everywhere. You can... You can hear the, um, the birds sing and the waves of the sea like music, the raindrops like music also, and sometimes even the, the wind that blows, you know, as it blows through the trees or through, um, uh, uh, as it blows, you can hear its sound and it's like, it's music, you know, and, uh, and many things, like even the stars, the Bible says the stars sang, you know, during creation. God created music as a, best, as a beautiful expression of our worship to him. So even God actually himself sings. If you look at the, the verse in, um, um, I think it's in Zephaniah, Zephaniah 3.17, let me read to you in, uh, here you go. The Lord your God in your midst, the mighty one, will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. You know? He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. Hallelujah. See, the Lord is a singer. And... Um, it's amazing that um, even among many religions, it is Christianity that sings. It has always been part of our worship. But it more than just really singing, there's power into it, as we will see in scriptures. At the same time, it is something that we enjoy. Even in the world, music is being, being enjoyed by people. And actually, it's very powerful that many Musicians are being adored by people. It's captivating. Music can be an avenue for uh, uh, people, even people to be worshipped by people. You know? And just like popular singers, uh, especially during those times of the Beatles, when they said that they are more popular than Jesus Christ because of their songs. And uh, of course, that's that's evil. I mean, that's that's bad to say that. And uh, 
by the way uh, look at what uh, happened to the one who said that so anyway there is power in a song both uh, whether negative song or positive so it just depends on the lyrics and the spirit behind the singer it can either build up or tear down it can give life or it can defeat the enemy it can give life or it can cause death i mean and uh, it can lift up or discourage it uh, it can uh, actually even bring healing and so much more uh, especially in the spiritual aspect of um, our worship as we sing to God, there's something that's happening in the, in the heavenly realms that's beyond our naked eye. And we, we may not even hear it, but uh, it's, it's there. But most of all, it brings pleasure to our God who loves us and who even requires us to sing who commanded us to sing to him a new song, you know. So with that as introduction, let's go forth and see the power and let's explore the power of a song, especially a new song to the Lord. Okay, there is what we call, number one, the teaching power of a song. There is a teaching power of a song. And as we read in Colossians chapter 3, verse 15 to 16. Colossians 3, 15 to 16. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with, your, uh, with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts or making melody in your hearts to the Lord, as it says in the NIV. The teaching power of a song wherein it says here that let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. And uh, how do we do that? It says there that admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Um, songs are actually, uh, many times the word, songs we're singing uh, depends on the writer, are uh, biblical, uh, and they carry biblical tr truths. And as we sing them, actually what's happening is we are um, filling our minds with the lyrics, of course. We're filling our minds with the word of God or even principles from the word of God. Because in a song, of course, there are lyrics which can be instructional or it deals with the mind. But there's also this melody which is inspirational, with the, which deals with the emotion. See, there is, uh, again, the lyrics, instructional, and also the melody or the tune which gives inspiration. Okay. So it deals with emotion. In a song, the two come together. Both the uh, lyrics, uh, both the instructional and the inspirational come together in a song. It's, that's why it's so beautiful. And so as we read there in the book of Colossians, how we can actually teach and admonish one another through psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. That's wonderful. How many people were able to memorize uh, scriptures by putting them as a song? Uh, like kids love to sing, and it's really good to teach them songs, uh, scripture songs. It's easier to memorize if you put uh, tune to it. And so 
when maybe to us it's we're just actually kind of singing enjoy singing that but actually if we sing that with all our hearts scriptures they're powerful actually it's the same as speaking them but it's just the the difference is you're singing them Many times we sing, there is power in the name of Jesus. When we're speaking truth, there is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Those are, those are all biblical truths. And as we sing them with deep conviction in our hearts, you know what? It's powerful. When we declare, declarating songs like, uh, what am I, the God we serve? Walang, uh, walang kamatayan, uh, you know, uh, songs natin, uh, you know, although called charismatic songs, but we're speaking the truth of God, the word of God. Yeah. Just like the song, um, that song, uh, um, nothing is too difficult for thee. You know, when you're having problems, and you are in distress or maybe the devil is trying to put you down. And then you can sing songs from the scripture and said, Oh, Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. Where did you get the lyrics? It's from the book of um, uh, song. I mean, uh, is this uh, written by uh, Jeremiah? Um, this um, in uh, in the book of uh, Lamentations, isn't it? Yeah. Oh Lord God, Thou hast made the heavens. You're declaring the greatness of God and applying that in your situation when you say nothing is too difficult for Thee. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing, and it, you even encourage yourself as you declare the truth. Indeed, see, there's power in that. You even enjoy singing it. Okay, so but there is another aspect of just being. I mean, it's not just about instructional, which is the word, the truth. It's not just about inspirational, but also spiritual. And when the spiritual aspect of it, I mean, when the Spirit of the Lord comes, the Holy Spirit himself anoints you and anoints the singer you know, behind that, uh, the song. You know, as you sing it, the spirit behind the singer matters much. When you're uh, empowered or anointed by the Holy Spirit, by the power of the Holy Spirit, the song or the message of the song gets into the heart. And even not only the singer, but even the hearers will be ministered to and amazing things will happen. Like, for example, in um, Deuteronomy, uh, there's what we call the song of Moses. Okay, Let's see that in Deuteronomy chapter 31. And let's read from verse 19. Deuteronomy 31, verse 19. Okay. 31, 19. Where is that? Now, therefore, write down this song for yourselves and teach it to the children of Israel. Put it in their mouths that this song may be read, uh, will may be a witness for me against the children of Israel when I have brought them to the land flowing with milk and honey of which I swore to their fathers and they have eaten and filled themselves and grown fat. Then they will turn to other gods and serve them and they will provoke me and break my covenant. You know, this is talking about the song of the story of what the Lord has done. So this is instructional also. And um, this is a song of Moses. And if you go to verse, um, uh, go to verse 30, 
Uh, then Moses spoke in the hearing of the assembly of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. See? And if the, the whole song starts in chapter 32. And if you look at even just a sample of that in verse 44, go to verse 44. It says here, So Moses came with Joshua, the son of Nun, and spoke all the words of this song in the hearing of the people. So Moses finishes speaking all these words to Israel. This song, okay? Um, again, it tells of the story of how the Lord has worked mighty wonders in the lives of these Israelites, even in their journey through the wilderness. Also in Jeremiah chapter 31, Jeremiah 31 verse 33. Let's see also what Jeremiah says. 31 verse 33. Let me read to you. Jeremiah 31, 33. Okay. Go. It says here. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. No more shall every man teach his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and their sins. I will remember no more. When the Lord says here that I will, I will put my laws in their minds and write it on their hearts. You know, I believe that when, when we talk of song, which is intellectual, also inspirational, and um, um, uh, there's this part of the Holy Spirit moving, actually, in this period of grace, period of uh, the uh, dispensation of the Holy Spirit. And actually, this prophecy is talking about our time, where in God actually is, is doing it, writing his words in our hearts. And I believe that the song that we're singing is a fulfillment of that, that as we sing scripture songs. And God uh, uses that as a means to write those words in our hearts, his words. Amazing. Hallelujah. It, it, actually, in Ezekiel chapter 36, verse uh, 27, we have this uh, lots of verses. So uh, just follow me. Go to Ezekiel chapter 36. And let's read verse 27. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgment and do them. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the one who is really uh, moving in the lives of every believer this time. That's why God has given him he sent the promise, the Holy Spirit, to us to help us. And without the Holy Spirit, there is no way we can understand the word of God. There is no way we can even come to God without the conviction of the Holy Spirit. We can have, no one can be born again without the Spirit of God. That's why one of the uh, terms being used for somebody who's born again is born by the Spirit. Amen. And... Even as we serve the Lord, there's no way we can go on without the empowering of the Holy Spirit. And so even to understand the word of God, we need the Holy Spirit. And it's so amazing how through songs, the Spirit comes and anoints us, empower us as we sing to the Lord and even um, helps us to understand the word of God. So there is this teaching power of the song. It can be through to all ages, kids adults even to um you know the older folks as we all sing together the word of the lord and uh, sing them to god it's amazing how this wonderful um music 
with the lyrics that comes from the word of God and by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amazing. It can even break in the yokes of um, the, uh, the lies of the enemy through the power of a song. That's why so many people are uh, being um, led to the Lord through, through a song, anointed songs, biblical songs, and praise God. There are kinds of songs that are mentioned here, as we have read in Colossians, like the Psalms. Psalms are scripture songs. Psalms are uh, mostly, uh, we know it as uh, the book of Psalms, a collection of um, lyrical poems, songs, prayers, hymns, and meditations written by different authors. Like uh, one of them is David, Moses, or even uh, uh, some of the Levites, even Solomon, who were inspired by the Holy Spirit. These Psalms were used by the priest, especially during the time of King David. Actually, David composed some of these psalms, most of these psalms, by the way, and gave it to the priest for them to sing to God, to minister to the Lord. Actually, uh, it, he made it a very big deal that he appointed uh, thousands of musicians, actually, and six, thousands of singers to, to minister before the Lord. There were many psalms that were written and until now uh, people are writing psalms although they are uh, not included as uh, in the book of psalms of course but um, still people can write uh, songs um, uh, scripture songs we can even use other scriptures now and put them into a uh, song and uh, again those are what we call scripture songs or psalms there are also hymns you know, hymns are religious songs of praise or uh, prayer songs. Um, hymns are part of the book of Psalms, and these are meant to be sung. Hymns are meant to be sung to praise God. Could mean um, speaking or singing, but hymn is meant to be sung. In Ephesians 5.19, says, speaking to one another in Psalms. It could be... Um, uh, you know, I mean, psalms could be spoken, but uh, hymns are uh, uh, are meant to be sung. So that's why it says hymns and spiritual songs making melody in your heart to the Lord. So um, sometimes uh, uh, we don't know the, uh, I mean, uh, we cannot uh, really distinguish between the two. But um, uh, we are when we talk of hymns, usually we are referring to the old hymns, the hymnal book, you know. And um, but mostly these hymns are actually testimonials of the wonderful, wonderful works of God. And if we go deeper into that, there is uh, what we call um, uh, in the in the book. I mean, in in Hebrew, where there is this. Um, word that says tehela tehela or tehela is a Hebrew word which means a song of praise or a hymn of praise or it could even be a, a, a prayer of praise you know and uh, example of that is in Psalm 66 verse 8 okay let's see that Psalm 66 verse 8 it says here Oh, bless our God, you who peoples, and make the voice of his praise to be heard. Okay, Make of the, his voice uh, of his praise to be heard. Praise must be audible, by the way. And so when we um, sing a song of praise, that's Tehillah. And that's why the book of Psalms is called actually Tehillim. Tehillim being the plural form of Tehillah. You know, once you are dealing with Hebrew words, I am will always, uh, would always uh, uh, speak of being plural. That's why when we talk of God being Elohim, uh, that's the plural form. That's why in the beginning, Elohim. Elohim is, of course, uh, we know that uh, God is uh, a triune God. 
So Elohim is plural. Amen. Uh, we don't serve three gods, but we serve one God in three person, of course. The traditional hymn we know today are usually arranged poetically with certain tunes to be sung in four voice harmony. That's why many times we, if you have been a member, if you're a member of a choir, you're a member of the music team, we're in, you read notes as you sing. I remember I was uh, in high school in uh, Sagada and I sang in the tenor. Uh, we usually follow the notes, you know, as we sing those uh, for my whole uh, second year to fourth year in high school, I've been singing in the choir, uh, all these hymns, but I've never really understood them. You see what happens when you're just singing them without the spirit of God giving us understanding, nothing happens. That's why I said there is the power in the song relies also in the spirit behind, amen? When the spirit of God is the one moving, then you will experience the power of that song, really. Hallelujah. So aside from Psalms, hymns, it's also mentioned in the book of um, um, Colossians, wherein we read spiritual songs. What are spiritual songs? Spiritual songs are songs that we sing spontaneously as we are led and inspired by the Spirit of God. Just like when we do spontaneous worship, when we sing to God, even in tongues, you know, a spirit-filled person would usually express his joy and his uh, admiration to the Lord in worship. And uh, regardless if your voice is key of Q or key of, you know, you don't understand, or uh, but you know what? Just sing to God and um, it's your spirit. I mean, the Holy Spirit in you leads you and as you actually sing, make the decision to sing to the Lord and express your worship to God, it pleases the Lord. Hallelujah. And the Spirit sings. Uh, hallelujah. It's amazing how actually the Holy Spirit himself anoints us to sing so that you can feel it. You enjoy it. You don't want even to stop. There are times that when we worship, uh, it's like if only we can just go on. But, of course, there are many other parts of the service that we just have to uh, contain ourselves with, uh, you know, 20 minutes of praise and worship and hallelujah. Uh, but we can have our own praise and worship while working, you know. There's power in this. As you sing spiritual songs, speak in tongues. Uh, you can uh, make it a habit uh, that while you're maybe busy of something, while singing, then actually what is you are doing as you speak in tongues and sing to God, you're worshiping and bringing pleasure to the Lord. At the same time, you're in actually edifying yourself as you speak in tongues. And uh, it's amazing. So there's power in that. Hallelujah. Uh, it, you're actually speaking life. And, you know, and sometimes uh, there is this um, tefillah where you, know, you uh, actually uh, pray your, I mean, sing your prayers to God. Amen. Um, when you sing your prayers to the Lord, it's wonderful. Hallelujah. You're, you're not only praying on your own, but you're allowing the Holy Spirit to anoint you as you sing your prayers to the Lord. So... There are many things that can happen as we sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to the Lord. With psalms, we declare his words. With hymns, we declare his works. And with spiritual songs, we express our love and our devotion to God. And as we welcome his will also to happen in our lives. Let's move forward. There is power also in the, of a song for spiritual warfare. I believe uh, many of us have heard this already about the power of praise. Yes, there is power in praise as is this uh, revealed in scripture. The, the most uh, classic uh, example of that is uh, the most popular verse we can read when it comes to the power of praise is in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, 
verse 20 to 25. So let's just visit that once again and see this wonderful story. Actually, it doesn't stop to amaze me how this story has unfolded. We're in, um, it's amazing how the Lord has displayed the power of praise, power of songs through the life of the, um, the tribe of Judah. By the way, this is uh, for us as uh, Bible students, um, for us to understand this, by the way, this is, um, this is talking about the southern kingdom. Remember that um, uh, as we um, talk about Israel, after David, after King David, he was the uh, king, uh, I mean, uh, who made the, um, the, the, uh, the, list, the, uh, the map of Israel bigger. I mean, he conquered lots of kingdoms. And here comes Solomon. And then after that, his son, Rehoboam. During the time of Rehoboam, there was uh, the split of the two kingdoms. It be Israel became two kingdoms and one kingdom in the south, which is called the kingdom of Judah. And the northern kingdom composed of ten tribes, <clears throat> the kingdom of Israel. So this is talking here about the kingdom of Judah. And the king during this time is King Jehoshaphat. Okay. So in here, it says there in um, verse 1, it happened that this, <coughs> excuse me, that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them besides the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat saying, a great multitude is coming against you beyond the sea from Syria, and they are in Hazas and Tamar, which is in Gedi. <clears throat> Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. To make the story short, he started to um, uh, even uh, um, declare a fast, and as he himself sought God. Because he was afraid. Because they know that they are totally outnumbered. And uh, there's no way for them to <coughs> defend themselves. Excuse me. Um, what happened here is amazing. How when they inquired of the Lord. This is our instructions of the Lord to them. That they are, so, uh, that they are to be uh, uh, to face the enemy. But this is how they did it. In verse 20. So early in the morning. And um, and went out, okay, they rose up early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. <coughs> Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord. Remember. Take note of that. He appointed those who should sing to the Lord, who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went before the army <coughs> and were saying, praise the Lord. Oh, we, they went out before the army. Praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Now, <coughs> excuse me, as they began to sing to uh, and praise God, the Lord set ambush, ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. Now, the, um, let's just leave it there. But this is amazing. This is a display of how God can defeat our enemies by trusting him and expressing our trust in him. By worshiping him, praising him. It's, uh, it's amazing how the Lord has displayed his power here. And um, how the enemy has been confused. When the people of God started to sing to the Lord. This um, scenario is, we cannot see in the spiritual realm. But as we sing... Our voices, you know, travels through the airwaves. 
And can you imagine thousands of people singing? And the spiritual um, forces of evil don't like our songs. With the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit, you know what? We have experienced many times that when there are people who are demon-possessed, the moment we sing songs, they don't like it. How do we know they don't like it? They cover their ears. We have, I've seen that many times. When we sing songs and there is deliverance that's happening, they would cover their ears. They don't like to hear it. And the same is true in the heavenlies. As we sing songs to God and with the power and anointing of the Holy Spirit comes upon us, there is battle that's happening. And of course, the devil is defeated and all these works of the enemy, um, they are also defeated. And we can see this being displayed here because what happened was it confused the enemy. See, praise can bring confusion to the enemy, wherein it says in verse 23, for the people of Ammon and Moab stood against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end to the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. So the Israelites did not have to fight that battle. They only had to face the enemy, but not with a sword, but with songs of praise. And it was God who did the battle because in the first place, the Lord says the battle is the Lord's. Same is true with us in our battles. It's so good to employ these weapons that we have, the power of a song, the power of praise. And we don't have to fight this. It's not by might nor by power, but, but, but by the spirit of the Lord. Let the Lord show his power as his children praise his name. Let the Lord show his glory as the people of God trust in him and express that trust through worship and praise to God. As we actually, as we do that, we are also obeying God in his commands to praise him. See, um, in Psalm chapter 8, verse 2, these are some of the verses that uh, it talks about the uh, prophetic songs, you know, wherein it's really powerful. Let's read Psalms 8, verse 2. It's amazing indeed how God has designed that even... In the simplicity of a song, God can display his marvelous power. Psalms 8 verse 2, out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants. How can this be? You know, you have ordained strength because of your enemies that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. This is a psalm of David and he's talking here. Of the excellent ways of the Lord. Verse 1 actually says, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength. Actually, it can also, and other translation, you have ordained praise. Who are babes and infants? They are uh, defenseless, they are weak, and yet God can use the weak or the simplicity of praise to display his glory and his power. And we have experienced that even, as I said, during deliverance. I remember those times wherein we just uh, break forth into praise and deliverance happens. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. The God we serve today is the same the God whom Jehoshaphat has served and the same God who still fights our battle. Let's praise our Lord. Hallelujah. So there you go. Actually, even in Psalm 149, this is classic because it says there directly about the power of praise. Okay, let's see it. In Psalm 149, it says here, praise the Lord. By the way, that is not just a suggestion. That is commanded. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sing to the Lord. You see so many instructions for us to sing to God. By the way, it's not just in the, it's not in the mind that we sing. 
we sing with our lips. Declaration, okay? Sing to the Lord, what? A new song. There's power here. And his praise in the assembly of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name with the dance. Oh, praise God for dancers. But it's not only them who can dance. We can all dance. Let them praise. Uh, let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. It's tambourine and harp. Harp. I don't know if somebody plays harp, but we have guitars and all other instruments. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. And then he says in verse 5, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud in their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. The high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. For what? To execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the written judgment, this honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. You know when he's, what he's talking about here is that as we sing praises to the Lord, just like what happened during the time of Jehoshaphat in the kingdom of Judah that we have just read, in uh, Second Chronicles chapter 20, this is it. This is what happened. That when we sing songs, we execute the vengeance of our God to the nations. Wherein God has declared punishment and God has given that glory to the saints or that honor to the saints. That through our worship and praise to God, we are executing the written judgment against the enemy. See, when Jesus Christ came and died on the cross, he, de he defeated the enemy. That we, as people of God, can execute that or can like impose the judgment through our praise and worship to the Lord. That's why as we sing the songs, uh, the truth of God's word, as we declare them, the enemy is being defeated. And it says here, we bind their kings with chains. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Those are um, symbolic of, uh, I mean, of course, the kings here speaks of the principalities of the air. Or maybe in the, during the time of David, it's talking about, you know, this, those kings against the people of God. But spiritually speaking, because we are talking, we are not uh, doing uh, physical warfare. We're doing spiritual warfare. So even the weapons are spiritual in nature. And we thank God that even as we praise the Lord, we are executing judgment over the kings or the principalities of the air. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But it takes anointed people, anointed uh, uh, singers to do this and we believe that as we trust in the Lord and as we obey him his anointing is upon us hallelujah another uh, power of song is this what we call the song of breakthrough okay it's not just in spiritual warfare but um, there is a song of breakthrough which actually uh, yeah, it's still part of spiritual warfare. But when we talk of breakthrough, uh, this, there's our, there, there are examples of that uh, manifested or we can see revealed in scripture how the Lord has used the power of song for breakthrough. We can see that in, in the example of um, uh, Paul and Silas as they were in prison. And instead of having a pity party because they were serving the Lord and yet uh, they did so many good things and yet they, they found themselves landing in the innermost uh, cell in the press, prison and uh, they were guarded heavily. But before they were put into that prison cell, they were beaten badly or ba yeah, they were badly beaten. To the point that um, you know, you, you know, when uh, they scourge them, it's it's terrible. 
and um, with that, they could have just, uh, you know, uh, dis be discouraged and feel sorrowful by, for themselves and um, having a pity party there inside that prison cell. But they chose to praise the Lord. So let's read that account in Acts chapter 16 and read verse 16 to 18. Now it happened as, um, oh, let's see. Uh, not verse, um, uh, okay, let's go immediately to verse, um, verse 25. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loose. How could that be? But there is what happened is, as Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns, to God. Maybe they, have, they don't have hymn book, but they have uh, memorized songs maybe, or they were just singing the um, from the Psalms, you know, and um, singing to the Lord. As it says here, then an earthquake happened. You know, as uh, uh, there is a uh, joke when it comes to this, that isn't it that the Bible says that the earth is the Lord's footstool, you know. And so when the Lord heard the music of Paul and Silas and he started to tap his toe <laughs> and there created an earthquake on earth. And so that's why uh, there was an earthquake and the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened. But this is the power of the Holy Spirit. There was a breakthrough in that prison cell. And you know what? Instead of all the prisoners taking that opportunity to run away, let me tell you what happened. They were all captivated by the Spirit of the Lord. And they were all just there. They did not uh, take the chance to escape. So that's why it uh, resulted to the salvation of the um, jailer and his family. And I believe so even this. Um, people, I mean, uh, the prisoners, all other prisoners were also amazed of what happened. And I believe they were also, they heard the gospel that was preached by Paul. Hallelujah. So this is amazing that uh, through the uh, praise and worship of Paul and Silas, something happened in the heavenlies that resulted in the salvation of uh, this many people so it can be also as we sing songs you know out there actually we uh, we always uh, see you there in Hong Kong uh, when you go out there and uh, sing and do concert that's what is actually happening uh, something is happening in the in the heavenlies as you go out there and declare the praises of God. Actually, that the same principle with uh, what is happening when um, there is this uh, Jesus march, you know, or uh, as the people go around and do Jericho march or, uh, you know, um, yeah, Jesus march. And um, people are singing, declaring uh, songs, declaring the praises of God. Something is happening. We never, may, we may never see it in the uh, with our physical eye but uh, we will see the manifest that uh, you know uh, people are being brought to god amen uh something uh, i believe that um, um even what they call this uh, territorial spirits are affected uh the darkness starts to give way to light you know many things can happen and uh, soon you will see the impact of that in the uh, physical world. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's why you see the impact of that. It turned to be the salvation of those people in the jail or even the jailer himself. So in Psalm 40 verse 3, we'll see Psalm 40 verse 3. And let's, uh, let's read that. Psalm 40 
verse 3. It says here, He has put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. You see this? That verse alone speaks of the power of a new song you know, that the Lord puts in our mouths. And as we sing them to God, many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. And many other scriptures, uh, as we talk of uh, um, salvations um, that uh, happens through the power of songs. I, I remember one brother saying that he came to realize how God has loved him so much when he heard that song, Footprints in the Sand. And God used that song to minister to him and uh, prepared him for, for him to uh, hear the gospel. So that's why when he heard that song, he did not immediately understand what uh, about the, the, all about the gospel, but uh, it prepared him so that when he was invited for Bible study, he was ready to go because his heart was melted through that song. You know, and uh, in um, Psalm 32, verse 7, let's also read Psalm 32, verse 7, and see what it says here. Psalm 32, verse 7. Okay, let me read to you. You are my hiding place, it says there. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance okay when we talk of the songs of breakthrough actually it's also songs of deliverance amen we're in um, songs of salvation um you are my hiding place Ooh. it's amazing really when we start to sing when you're just reading it's good it's amazing but when you start to sing them makes a big difference you always fill my heart with songs of deliverance amen so there is this song of breakthrough song of deliverance the same is true in exodus chapter 15 verse 2 hallelujah i hope you're picking up something to all the more make you be encouraged to sing to god look at exodus 15 exodus chapter 15 verse 2 okay let's see then uh again oh, we're back here to the song of moses then moses and the children of israel sang this song to the lord and spoke saying by the way, the other song is also a song of Moses. This one is a different one. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song. Hallelujah. See, by the way, many times we read in scripture, song and strength or, or strength and song. Usually they come together because... One is an effect of the other, is or vice versa. And thus, we are strengthened by the Lord. We sing to God, or at the say, or we sing to the Lord, and we are strengthened by the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, as we wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, our God. You know, Hallelujah! Amazing indeed. How Songs can be songs of breakthrough and songs of deliverance. That's why it says there, he has become my salvation. See that? I'm still reading verse 2. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God and I will praise him. My father's God and I will exalt him. Hallelujah. Amen. And even since in verse 3, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. That's why the Lord fights our battles. That's why there's breakthrough. There is 
songs of deliverance. And there's another uh, power of song. Another one, number four, is this. By the way, number one was the teaching power of the song. And the number two is the power of spiritual warfare, the, uh, the power of song in spiritual warfare. Number three, if you're taking down notes, the song of breakthrough and salvation. Okay. And then there is number four, the song of birthing. Okay. As we have read already in Isaiah, but let us see it again. Isaiah 54, verse 1 to 3. And let's read once again that verse we have read. Isaiah 54, 1 to 3. It says here, Sing, O barren, you who have not born, break forth into singing. What's the uh, point of singing? When, uh, you know, when a person is barren, especially in the... Uh, context of being in the Middle East, uh, especially among Jewish. Barrenness is a sign of uh, disgrace. I mean, it's a sign of uh, the absence of blessing. And so therefore, that's disgrace. And so what's there to sing about when you're in disgrace? But the Lord says, sing, O barren, you who have not born, break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not labored with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent. And let them stretch out to the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. You know, he's talking here of a song of birthing. You know what? He's not saying here that he already has children. She already has children. But as she sings songs, there's the songs of birthing, believing that God is going to perform according to his promise. Amen. Hannah chose to uh, praise the Lord. Um, when uh, in First uh, Samuel chapter 2, verse 1 to 2, Hannah was barren. And it seems like this psalm is applied to her. In, in let, let us see in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1. Okay. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. All right. It says here, chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. I smile at my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. For no one is holy like the Lord, for there is none besides you, nor there is any rock like our God. You see this famous song we are saying, there is no rock, there is no rock like our God, has been sang actually by Hannah. You know, she sang the song after um, she um, uh, gave birth. Uh, to um, uh, what's this? Um, I mean, when uh, the Lord um, has heard her petition, and um, even though she hasn't, um, you know what? Um, I mean, after she uh, prayed and asked God to give her a child, uh, and uh, promised even the child to be um, uh, dedicated. And that, that, that was actually Samuel. And uh, this is what the Lord has done. So she, uh, once that the child was weaned, um, she brought the child to serve the Lord in the temple. And after that, she sang this song, the song of a barren woman who was given a child by the Lord. And she praised God for that. Mary also sang a song when... Um, she became uh, pregnant and um, of our Lord Jesus Christ. She also had her song. Hallelujah. There's this song of birthing. We can sing in our barren situations. Whatever situations we're in, it seems like there's no blessing. It's barren. We can sing to the Lord and claim God's promises and speak life through our songs, through our situations, and let the Holy Spirit Bring life 
to that. Amen? And then, also, there is the song, lastly, the song of the righteous. The song of the righteous in Psalm 32, verse 11. Let's do it quickly. I think I'm past my time. But let us just uh, read this um, few more scripture here. Psalm 32, verse 11. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. Amen. Of course, uh, there is this what we call positional righteousness. When it comes to our standing before the Lord, no one really is righteous. Only God is righteous. But because of our faith in Christ Jesus, Christ has become our righteousness. But also, of course, there is this practical righteousness that we are supposed to, stand, uh, to also walk uh, according to the word of God, uh, to follow his ways and be righteous uh, in his eyes. But uh, our righteousness is not something that we really can earn. Um, it is by the grace of the Lord that um, we have become righteous. And uh, also by the grace of God, we can walk righteously uh, and humbly before the Lord. And you know what? There is a song for the righteous. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's why even for us who are in Christ Jesus, we, we don't usually uh, enjoy maybe this praise and worship. But now that we have become born again, we used to laugh at those who sing hallelujah, hallelujah, alive, alive, you know. And then suddenly, you know, it's so good to sing the songs, actually, you know. Well, because you are now one of those who are called the righteous people of God in Christ Jesus. There are many more verses to that. If you book, uh, read in the book of Romans, that's the, uh, uh, you know, it's wonderful to read and study the book of Romans, just like the constitution of the Bible, because you will see there about the law and the grace of God. And it's amazing how God has called us in Christ to be righteous. Amen. Our righteousness is in Christ. And as we sing songs to the Lord, hallelujah, amazing. We give, we, it brings pleasure to God to sing the truth about what Christ has done for us. And there is uh, finally, last one is the song of comfort. The song of comfort and strength, as we have read in uh, Exodus chapter 15, verse 2, of what Moses sang, that the Lord is my strength. And my song, it talks of really comfort when the Lord grants victory in, uh, in our lives over whatever the enemy is trying to do. So as people of God, let us sing. Amen. And sing aloud. There are times that we just sing loudly. And uh, of course, uh, uh, there's time for everything. You don't, you don't just sing in the middle of a message or, you know, uh, of course, uh, there's time for everything. But as we are given the opportunity to sing to God, let's do it. Because we are not just enjoying it, but there's power that is associated in it. And sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. So let the songs of Zion ring. And let, once again, let the world uh, experience the power of our, the, the songs of praise to our God and let the people come and hear and um, put their trust in the Lord. Let God show his glory as we sing to him. Let him show his power and his majesty through the simplicity of our song. It's amazing how God uses the simple things to shame the wise, the least to shame the... Uh, uh, I mean, uh, the weak, the shame, the strong. May the Lord bless you all once again. Happy anniversary to every one of you. Let all the saints of God sing a new song to the Lord, declaring his glory. Hallelujah. And let God display his power. Amen. By the way, that's just the beginning. Because in heaven, we are destined to a, a uh, eternal concert to God, wherein everybody will just be there in the presence of the Lord forever, where there's fullness of joy in, the, in um, 
as we worship our God, our Savior. God bless you all. Thank you once again. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful time of enjoying your words. And Lord, inspiring us to sing all the more to you as you have filled the world with music and even heaven is filled with music and worship unto your holy name. You deserve the praise. You deserve the glory. And Lord, as we sing, indeed God, display your power. Be magnified. Be glorified in all the earth. Let your songs, let your praise be heard over all the earth, Father. We thank you, Lord. And so, God, let this truth continue to sink in the hearts of your people and be applied in our daily lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless everyone.